Um, what I want to do is just to, first of all give you um, a little bit of background uh, about myself and then I'll go into my specific uh, presentation which um, I've typed because um, I don't want Alison to tell me off going off into orbit, which I will do if I'm not careful. Um, but I have, the, I suppose, the advantage um, of having um, worked in mental health for over 30 years. Um, and it, I started in 1977 when I worked for Stunham Housing Association, which was a special needs housing association, it still is. And it was there that I got my passion um, and, and, and a sense of, of severe injustice that I saw what was going on um, with people with mental health problems. Um, um, not the people that we were housing, but the people we were not housing. And then, um, ironically, um, in 1999, my son developed schizophrenia as a result, we think, of uh, treatment by cannabis. Um, so from Having worked in it and felt the injustice of it, I suddenly become a carer and I felt the pain of it. Um, and I won't go into too much details about my own experience as a carer because I want to talk more about what I see as the injustice. Because if I'm honest, the experience I had as a carer was not too bad. Um, it may simply it might be something to do the fact that I was regional director for Rethink um, and uh, and had and had been. Uh, actively campaigning, uh, well, I'll talk, talk about that in a moment, and I've been on TV quite a bit. So we had a good deal, we had a, a very good deal. Um, but having said that now, 11 years on, he has dropped off the radar um, because he's kind of on a plateau. But I, 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 I'll, um, l let, me, let me focus now on, let me go back <coughs> to 30 years. Um, it was nearly, it was 30 years ago in 1984, uh, 1984 that I gave a presentation to an all-party committee of MPs entitled The Plight of Mentally Ill Living in the Community. This was a result of my work working for Stonham. And it outlined the failure of, communi of community care, um, uh, the failures of community care, and our increasing numbers of people with severe mental illness were being what I described were being discharged from 19th century institutions into 20th century poverty. Three years later, uh, in 1987, I met with an investigative journalist from the Sunday Times and I supplied her with a dossier uh, which outlined a catalogue of failures. Um, we met actually at Southampton Station in a very dark corner um, and I passed this dossier over. It was like one of these, um, one of these spy films um, and it was full of stuff in there and I had been collecting this and I had a number of people who were whistleblowers um, whose, whose names are still uh, are private um, who, had, who had blown the whistle about what was going on with being discharged. Um, that investigative jar journalist was Margie Wallace, who many of you would know and who went on to write The Forgotten Generations. I'd like to think that I sparked it off, but she went on and found a lot more uh, whistleblowers and, uh, uh, and I became just a part of it. I mention these pieces of social history because sadly, 25 years on, I find myself giving similar evidence on the continued, on what I call the uh, institutionalised neglect of people with schizophrenia and their families. And I really do believe it's institutionalised neglect. Despite all the developments in the community care and the mental health systems, it's still failing people with schizophrenia. Crisis, one of the la London's largest homeless charities, have reported 15% of homeless people have schizophrenia. According to the Royal College of Psychiatrists, nearly 5,000 people with psycho psychosis are in British prisons. I actually did my own work and I actually run a few prisons and people were saying to me, this is, this is seriously bad, this was in the last couple of years and likewise I've been ringing around a lot of homeless towns and the anecdotal evidence is scary and I think it's getting worse. Um, we've got, and, and then 10% of people with schizophrenia die from suicide, 1 in 10. I think it's, 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 it's horrendous. So why is this still happening? I believe far too many professionals in healthcare, and especially those in social care, have quite simply failed to understand the complex and problematical nature of schizophrenia. There is, in my view, little comparison between the life-changing effects caused by schizophrenia than other forms of mental illness. And whilst I don't want to uh, denigrate, 
at any rate, the, the impact of mental illness is every single mental illness is, is, is horrendous for anybody. What I'm simply saying uh, to the Commission is that schizophrenia is profoundly different. Only 20% survive the worst ravages of this dreadful condition. Most people who develop schizophrenia do not go on to live normal lives. Most are unable to work. Few get married or successfully socially integrate or become prime ministers, spin doctors or comic geniuses. I believe many policymakers and politicians have been seduced into ideolo ideologically driven policies. It's a bit of a clumsy word. I, I did struggle to find a word, but I actually think that I idealism has crept in. Rather than sound evidence-based research, empowerment, independence, recovery, personalization, all, all crucial developments and all fundamental in the development. But for people with schizophrenia, these policies can, can and do lead to a life of loneliness, isolation, deprivation, and all, to, all too often substance abuse. Yeah, yeah. And, and substance abuse is the big issue. This is the big issue. We're forgetting about that, particularly those that are affected by drugs. Um, putting it bluntly, in the hands of politicians, some politicians, and in the hands of some primary care trusts, these policies are fast becoming money-saving initiatives, cloaked in the language of empowerment and independence. <coughs> I have only time for one example. Take personalisation, which I think is fantastic. But just look at the facts, the reality of what's going on. In Southampton, out of 290 service users using a local social club, 210 were assessed for personalised budgets. Only 10, 10 qualified under Southampton strict club, uh, strict criteria. The club has since closed because of the lack of funding. There was no follow-up, not one single follow-up of any of those who did not uh, get the assessment. Surprise, surprise, anecdotal evidence now is that local cafe owners are now complaining of mentally ill spending all day sitting over a cup of coffee. Now I do know that they have been setting up some peer group supports, so they go into Starbucks and places like that. But, I'm, I, but that's only a minority. I think personalisation is in danger of turning into a massive cost-cutting exercise, resulting in tens of thousands of very vulnerable citizens being expunged, being expunged from the records and services being forced to close. I truly believe this is the next big mental health scandal. And if, it was 30, if I were 30 years younger, I think I'd be doing a, dos a dossier and I'd be looking for another Marjorie Wallace. The shift towards what I would call ideologically and financially driven policies, and many of the ideological policies are very sound, okay, um, but I haven't got time to go into the detail. Um, I'm sad to say it's partly due and I know this is going to upset a lot of people, I think a lot of this is partly due to service user movement. And something I've supported over the years, I've actually helped to set up one of the voices, one of, um, one of uh, um, uh, the uh, Rethinks First or the National Schizophrenia Fellowship. So I'm a passionate supporter of it. But unfortunately, a lot of the service users who have increased, uh, who have influenced government policy, um, have inadvertently misrepresented, misrepresented and these are people with schizophrenia. How? Because most of those that are campaigning at this level are people with depressive and, ang and anxiety disorders, not schizophrenia. There are people with schizophrenia, but they're quite rare. And I know that there are people on this table with schizophrenia. But what I put it to you, in my experience, and I, and I actually sit on, on a couple of national forums, that a lot of the people there who are speaking on behalf of the needs of people with mental health, it, I don't think fully understand the complexity of schizophrenia, particularly okay. those on drug abuse. One minute. One minute, okay. We need a proper longitude studies to assess the impact of the various government initiatives uh, having on people with schizophrenia and their families. We need, we need scientists to take centre stage on schizophrenia, not well-meaning idealism. 25 years ago, in summary, I was hopeful that people with schizophrenia would eventually get the justice they deserve. 25 year, years on, I fear many working in the mental health field, including staff, 
of mental health charities have lost insight into the needs of people with schizophrenia and no, and, and no longer or have lost the, the heartache that families feel. I can only hope that when I die, my son will be living in a society that does eventually empathise and understand his disability and will fight for his rights so that he does not become a burden to my daughter and grandchildren. Thanks very much. Thank you very much, Terry. You've obviously put a heck of a lot of effort and thought into uh, your campaign over the years, so I hope there'll be lots of questions.